Hi guys, I'm going to carry on reading from Mr Majika. This is chapter 5, The Disappearing Bottle. It was about three weeks after this that several of Class 3 went to see a film about Superman. The best bit, said Jodie to Pete and Thomas, was when he flew right over those tall buildings. I'd love to be able to fly like that. Do you think people ever can? I shouldn't have thought so, said Pete. But you could ask Mr Magic. I'm sure he'd know. So when Class 3 were beginning their next lesson, Jody did ask him, Mr Magic, can you really fly like Superman? Mr Magica smiled at her over his glasses. If you mean me, then certainly not. I'm too old for such things but someone a bit younger could manage it, with a little help. Did you mean a little magic? asked Jodie. Mr Majika nodded. Rubbish! shouted Hamish Bigmore. You couldn't make anyone fly, Mr Magic. No one could. It's scientifically impossible. Since the business of the frog, Hamish Bigmore had been behaving worse than ever. Obviously he thought Mr Majika wouldn't dare to do anything else to him. Mr Majika sighed wearily. It's not rubbish, Hamish Bigmore, but I don't intend to waste any time showing you. Oh, do, please do, said Jodie. And soon there was a chorus of, yes, do, Mr Magic. Couldn't you, just once? Of course he can't, sneered Hamish Bigmore. Very well then, snapped Mr Majika. Just to prove Hamish Bigmore wrong, I will but it will have to wait until tomorrow, when I can bring the potion. Everyone fell silent, wondering what the potion was. When the next day came, Mr Majika seemed at first to have forgotten all about his promise, for he said nothing about it. At last, Jodie asked him, Did you bring the flying potion, Mr Magic? Mr Majika frowned. Well, yes, I did. But really, I think the whole idea is a mistake. I'd much rather we forgot about it. These things have a way of getting out of hand. There you are, jeered Hamish. I told you he couldn't do it. Oh, really, Hamish Bigmore, you're enough to try the patience of a witch's broomstick, grumbled Mr Majika. I suppose I'll have to do it just to keep you quiet. Do what, Mr Magic, asked Thomas. Why... Give you all some of the flying potion, said Mr Majika. There was a happy uproar. What, all of us? asked Pete. Are we all going to be able to fly? Well, it'll have to be all or none, answered Mr Majika. Can you imagine how jealous everyone would be if I only let one or two of you do it? But it won't be proper flying. Just a little hover in the air. The potion is far too precious to be wasted. Class 3 tried to make him change his mind and allow them to fly properly, but he wouldn't. So in the end they queued up and were each given a very small spoonful by Mr Majika. It was green and sticky and tasted rather like cough mixture. Only Hamish refused to have any. He said the whole idea was silly. As soon as they'd taken it, Class 3 began to jump up and down in the hope of taking off into the air. But nothing happened. They were all dreadfully disappointed. There you are, sneered Hamish Bigmore. I told you so. It doesn't work. Oh, but it does, said Mr Majika. I forgot to tell you that it takes exactly half an hour before anything happens. So we must get on with the lessons for the next half an hour and then see. It was a very long, slow half an hour. And even when it ended, nothing happened to Class 3. What's gone wrong? Jodie asked Mr Majika. Nothing, answered Mr Majika, smiling. You can't just sit there and expect to fly without doing anything. Do you mean we should wave our arms about or something? asked Pete. Mr Majika shook his head. No, my friend. The secret is to think about flying. If the notion of flying comes into your head, then hey presto! I'm thinking hard about it, said Jodie. I'm really thinking about floating up in the air from my desk and... Oh! Oh! Suddenly, 
she found herself doing that. In a moment they were all doing it. It was a very peculiar feeling. You simply had to think about leaving the ground, and you did. What's more, once you were in the air, if you thought about, say, spinning around like a top, you found yourself doing it. Pete said, I'm going to think about floating across the room to the door. And there he was, doing just that. The only thing that disappointed them was that they were never very far from the floor. Can't you let us go higher, they pleaded with Mr Majika. He shook his head. Far too risky, he said. You might bump your head on the ceiling or do all kinds of dreadful things. And anyway, I want to save my precious flying potion. It always wears off in half an hour, however much you take. So it'd be an awful waste to give you lots of it. Alas, it did wear off in half an hour, to everyone's regret. And all too soon, they were down on the ground again, quite unable to float, however much they thought about it. Well, my friends, said Mr Majika, I hope you enjoyed that. And he turned to Hamish Bigmore, who had been sitting watching everyone else float through the air. I hope you believe me now. Oh yes, Mr Magic, answered Hamish, with a rather peculiar smile on his face. Very good, said Mr Majika. Well then, let me put the potion away and we can get on again with our proper lessons, which today... He stopped suddenly. What's happened to the potion, he said. The bottle had vanished. Where is the potion, said Mr Majika, in a very anxious voice. It was on my desk. Somebody's picked it up and hidden it. Will they please return it at once? No one said anything. Mr Majika turned to Hamish. Hamish, somehow I have a feeling that you are behind this. Hamish shook his head. Oh no, Mr Majika, he said sweetly. Why should I do a thing like that? Mr Majika looked at him steadily. Turn out your pockets, he said to Hamish, but the bottle wasn't in Hamish's pockets. After that, Mr Majika searched everyone saying as he did so, Oh dear, I knew I shouldn't have brought the potion to school. One of you has played a wretched trick on me and it's quite unfair. Perhaps, suggested Hamish Bigmore, the bottle itself can fly and it's flown away. He laughed funnily, but Mr Majika was not amused. Nowhere could the bottle be found and by the end of the school day, Mr Majika was looking very worried and very cross. I'm sure it's Hamish, said Pete to Thomas. He had something tucked under his coat when he left the classroom. Well, said Thomas, I'm sure we'll find out who's got it, whoever they are. They're bound to start flying pretty soon.